is a nice warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, everybody has a little red cord. Mm -hmm. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, people ask me, um, how did I get entangled uh, with ropes and uh, interested in knots? But before to speak to you, I want to make sure you can hear me in the back. Is it fine? You hear me good? Okay, well, okay. Yes, a little bit higher the sound. Oh, there's a hump in the back. Oh, there is a hump in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the god of nuts lurking. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so the answer to the question, how, how do I love nuts and ropes, is very simple. As a kid, I was actually from a very early age, maybe six years old or earlier, I was not too happy with uh, what's happening on the ground. The authority, the parent, the school, you know, eat your soup, go to bed, go to school. <laughs> so to escape the order, actually I start climbing. And I climb uh, trees and rocks, and very soon a young kid climbing needs ropes to rappel down, to do those monkey bridges between two trees, you know, one rope for the feet and one rope for the hands. But it's not easy at all. It's very wobbly. you turn around, you have to practice. Anyway, one day on my uh, monkey bridge, you know, like 12 years old, um, there was a cow coming when I was in the meadow in the center of France, and to impress the cow, I let go of one hand, you know. And then later on, the birds were also looking, who is this ugly bird with no feather <laughs> to be like us, so to uh, show off to the birds, I let both hands go. And this is a true story, how I became a self-taught wire walker. And of course, I realized ropes needs nuts, and I became is, is the sound still yeah. with me? Yeah. No, the sound is going in yeah. and out. Yeah. Yeah. They got it on a trick of the... <laughs> oh, yes, 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 that's it. That's it. We call it a Madonna mic. Okay, uh, that's, that's good. So, hello, hello, you can hear me? Yes. Yes, it's all right. Does it jump in and out of the frequency? Well, you know, anyway, uh, if, if it's uh, gone, I can always... Uh, you know, throw my voice. <laughs> so I was in uh, the need to know the right rope and the right knot. So I became a self-taught engineer and I started collecting books on knots. And there are thousands of them. And I travel constantly, so actually I have on my shelf 300 books of knots. <laughs> and I'm very unhappy with them. Hello, hello, I am in and out again. Yeah, I'm okay, so sorry. The, the 21st century technology <laughs> is against me, which is perfectly all right because I am a Luddite. <laughs> so we don't really talk much to each other right now. We don't even listen to each other. Hello, hello. Okay. So I thought it would be nice to have a book of not that is opinionated, that is not uh, 4,000 knots. There are 4,000 knots in existence. So I started to draw the step-by-step -step, uh, making of knots and to decide which knot I should put in my book. Actually, I made a, an exhibit of my drawing of knots and the president of Abrams, the publisher, hello, hello, <laughs> um, came and said, Philippe, I don't have any sound, Philippe, um, let's make a book of knots. And I said, no, I am tired of book of knots. We don't need one more, that there are thousands. He said, no, let's make a special book about a man who needs not for his survival. And for example, each chapter in my book starts with a big picture of a big walk on the high wire. And inside the picture, I have a little text with a true story of how a knot that day saved my life or saved the day. Also, also I carry with me at all times a little red book. And I thought, no, I didn't think. I demanded that the book carried, not the same book, it's too thick to put in the cover, but a very thin red book, same length, one meter, same color of red. So you have Philip's call in spirit <laughs> now with you. Um, also, this, uh, I wanted this book to be different from all the how to books. I am frustrated when I take an how to book, you know, how to uh, dig a tunnel. Mm -hmm. And then I turn the cover and there is a copyright page and an introduction and a preface and a table of content and a warning. And, and, then, and then after a lot of flipping, I arrive to, to how to start digging the tunnel. So I think an how to book should start directly. Maybe I should get rid of that book. 
You know what? It, it bothers me immensely. Okay. I think I'm going to project my voice. And I was right to not believe in that technology. <laughs> so, this book is the only book, can you hear me in the back? Good, I might need a little bit of syrup after, but who cares? Um, this is the only how-to book that starts right there. You turn the cover, actually, you pick up a little book, a little advice. You peel off the disc of paper, you discard it, you pull the little rope, you won't be able to really put it back, put it to mark your page. But I designed this book, and I'm very proud to share with you the fact that when the little cord is gone, the window connects with my favorite knot, the figure of eight. Nice. So you open, you don't have to flip through a page, you open and you jump right in. You have the little rope, I explain why I want you to jump right in, and you start knotting. Is that nice? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Also, also something, I always think, this is my ninth book, so I think it would be nice for an author to be a little speck on the wall, you say, a, a, a fly on the wall. And then you look, let's say, inside a, you know, a, a house, you know, that somebody reading your book, would that be great? The author is observing the reader. And this would be the worst thing for an author to look at. Somebody is reading the book, and somebody is reading the book. Uh, <laughs> that's a nightmare for an author. So, uh, no, hold on, I knew nobody would fall asleep on this book. But at the same time, I ensured that by creating, not way of course, but surprises. Now, I'm not supposed to tell you, but it's in the table of content. But what I, did in design, what I did in the design is each surprise has a red margin. So some of you who are not in the mood of reading the book, you can just entertain yourself with a surprise. <laughs> so I always have this little uh, chord with me because I like to teach knots and I like to learn knots. And also I like to do tricks for kids, for example. So knots can be very, very simple. I mean, this cannot be more simple than that. Everybody knows this is the overhand knot, and it has a AKA, the simple knot. Right? Actually, it's not so simple because I did it very fast, but if I do it slowly, <laughs> well, I don't know. If I do it, I go like this and I do it. <laughs> oh, you know what? No, 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 let's stop cheating. Let's do a knot that gets so small, so small, so small, that actually you cannot see it. <laughs> okay. or, or, if we also stop doing magic and go into the realm of real knot, I have a knot that I don't like, and it's like a potato knot. It's kind of ugly, you know, but it has an advantage. I travel all the time, and this knot can be put in the pocket. Oh, I to show it to you. Sorry, I always <laughs> No, when I see uh, kids, I love to do tricks to kids. So actually, I have a favorite, but it goes with adult as well. Oh, by the way, by the way, I found out, I have been uh, touring a little bit through the book. I find out, you bring a bunch of adults in a room. You give them each a little red cord, and they don't pay attention at all. They are all <laughs> red cord. They become children, OK? So you're all children, so I'm going to show you something. I go like this to a bunch of kids. And I say, this is the needle, and this is the thread. And really, little kids, I say, you've seen adult threading the needle, so, sewing. And they do that. Why is it? It is to gather the fibers so it goes easily through the needle. So I do that, and I say, look, one, two, it's important. The one, two, three, <laughs> I know something is going to happen after three, so one, two, three, and it passes through. It's nice, but it's not magic. So I look at the face of the kid, a little bit disappointed. This is cute, but it's not magic. But that's a whole lot. Now, if we do at the end of the rope a termination knot, right, to stop the, uh, the rope to go anywhere. And if now I do the same thing, I do my needle, but of course to make it magic, I'm going to make the eye of the needle as small as possible. And now again, I'm going to count three, but I do this. <laughs> and I go for one, two, three, and it goes through. You see, and I cannot even take it out. So that is magic.
again. <laughs> yes, if I were not a magician, I would do it again. But real magicians don't do it again. They do different things. Because the eye can catch something. It was you. It was you who wanted to do it again. Well, why don't you come over here? Let's see something. <laughs> no, I need somebody to help me. Please come over Thanks for the seat. Yes, here. And uh, I need, would, would you leave your book and your cahier and, and even this, may I give that to you? Hold on, I'm going to leave that. Okay. Okay. Please come with me, watch it, because there is a, there is a step. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no I, help right. people, I help people to turn around like this. I help people to climb, because I am always afraid, hold this rope here. I am always afraid. <laughs> they love they don't love at you, they don't love at you. So anyway, hold on, don't say anything. Don't say anything. Uh, you will have that in one second. And sir, you will have, no, no, don't, don't say anything. Don't mind anything. You make me very nervous. You know, so we start. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to show you how to make a very strong connection between two ropes. So it's a very simple knot. I go around like this, and it's very strong. Now you're far away, I'm going to open the knot a little bit so you can see the beauty of it. And I will do exactly the same on the other side. You see, I pull out, and I pass, and this is very strong. And I open the knot, and you will see that they look exactly alike, right? Mm -hmm. And now, now you're going to help me. Now you take this, both hands, take this both hands, and without jerk, you are going to pull, but hold on, I want your face to be focused and serious, even a little bit somber, it will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, why don't you stand here so everybody can see? Okay, now you pull, <laughs> seriously, pull hard, pull hard, that's as, you know, as much as you can pull, and stop, 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 that's good. Stop. <laughs> Relieve the tension, please, okay? And now you're gonna pull very gently, but with a smile. Right. <laughs> so you smile, and now you pull very gently. Pull gently, thank you very much. <laughs> See what you can do with a smile? Thank you. So, you know what? Um, I, can you come just one second? I want to do a little test. It's an observation test. Again, I, I take your wings to go. We don't want that. Okay, put your hand like this, just one second. Put your finger up. Yeah, and tap on your wrist here. Tap, 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 tap. There's nothing missing, like maybe a watch. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you. you know, I, sometimes it's a habit, I don't even give them back. <laughs> They are not, you will see that in my book, they are not for every mood. So for example, um, I know I'm not the only one, right? I'm sure people in this room wake up every morning and before to go on with their life, they have to knot with two different kind of knots, two separate knots, two rings in a row. I'm not the only one, right? <laughs> you don't want to lose your time doing two knots, one and two. So what you do is this, you go like this, and in one oh, second, oh, oh, two oh, knots. Oh, now I calculated one second, two knots, it average like half a second per knot. <laughs> See? Quite incredible. incredible. That's for the impatient. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but now we have the patient man or woman or kid, right? You, some people are so patient, it amazes me. So you see here, you put the ring and you let it go. And you could do that for, I don't know, for days. <laughs> <laughs> for weeks, until one day, by accident, you'll have a very strong nut. Isn't that incredible? I still don't understand what happens, but some people do it for months and then shoot. It happens. <laughs> so anyway, you could be impatient, you could be patient. <laughs> Are you uploading the ring and the rope or not tired? Or chance? I think you're uploading chance. I'm so glad I don't have this little monster mechanic. You, you can still hear me? Yes. Yes. There is no echo. echo. <laughs> ah, ah. My book, <laughs> I keep saying my book, I'm so happy it's happy. Um, My book has very unusual chapters, families of nuts. And I created some family, of course. I created a family that I like very much, simplicity and elegance. Mm. Because actually, most of the best thing in life, the best idea, the best solution, the best nuts, are simple. 
And if you have a few simple solutions, usually the one that is simple and appeals to you, you know, make you smile as poetry, is elegant, is the best solution. So of course I'm going to demonstrate and my angle, I'm a magician, so I always think of angle. My angles are pretty good. So here it is. Uh, now, of course, in big theater, big wheel ladder, big pulley, you know, and we do that in real size, but who needs here the wheel size? <laughs> so that's my ladder. And also I think about a problem and solution. I'm a self-taught man. So here I have a ladder problem. Um, we are in the construction side, and I need to attach my ladder with a rope, and it goes to the third uh, story of a scaffold, and we're going to bring the ladder up. Now, what not to do? What is the best not? You know, if we had time, but we don't have time. But if we had time, I would love to bring people on stage and say, show me, show me how would you attach, you know? And some people think they make 12 knots, thinking 12 knots are better than one. <laughs> well, that's not true. One knot is better than 12, if it is the right knot. <laughs> so I'm going to go right to the punchline, to this uh, the solution to this squeeze. But for me, again, when I say that this is a ladder problem, I find out that most of the time, the problem whisper its solution if you know how to pay attention to here. So here for me, I am a poet, so to me, what is a ladder? Well, a ladder is a festival of negative space surrounded by rungs and posts. That's the way I see the ladder. So I make a loop in a rope. And I present the loop to the ladder. I don't have to continue because now they talk to each other, obviously. Of course, the loop wants to penetrate the ladder. Okay. Now look at that. With one finger, if I were to pass the loop on top, you cannot call that tying a knot, I have done the best knot possible to carry the ladder. And hold on, it's a genius combination. I didn't invent it. Because it's a self-stabilizing knot. If I have my sandwich here, or a heavy uh, case full of tools, and it's windy. As the ladder goes up, the knot will find the center of gravity. Mm. Now hold on, that's half of it. <laughs> now, now we have the worker on the third floor of the scaffold. Have to untie the ladder. Well, of course, when you don't need to pull anymore, you create a bit slack, right, when you get the object. So you don't even have to do anything. You get the object, a little bit slack is. Now look at that, with one finger, I free the loop, and because of the heavy weight of the rope, gravity does the rest. You're going to call that a dying, right? You like it? Yeah. I, I, I will never learn. Oh, okay, how are you? <laughs> I, I called you, but the machine was on, so you know, I'm so glad you could make it. <laughs> you have a little more good. So I am showing about... Um, a solution to nothing that are simple and uh, elegant. So normally I would never learn, but normally I know I should only use one example, that's enough. Well, I'm going to use two, so use because that makes me also very happy. So here we have, in the same thing, I want to throw my hammer, I mean, if my friends are upstairs, the jugglers, I'm going to throw the hammer, they'll catch it, but we shouldn't do that uh, with non-jugglers. So here is a claw hammer problem. Again, the naive child in me doesn't look for solution in a big uh, book of solutions. I smell and I look and listen. Claw hammer problem. What is a claw? Well, a claw is a little narrow canyon that becomes more and more narrow as you go in. Oh, we could stick something there. So let's do a termination nut. Again, maybe you have noticed how I use a lot of figure of eight. <coughs> simple and elegant and makes me very happy. It's a beautiful <laughs> knot. So now, here it is. Oh, first I should, again, if we were sharing, if you say, come on stage, show me how you would attach. You know, some people even who know about knot, you make a very strong knot like this, forgetting that the head of the hammer is stronger and therefore it will uh, create an accident, you know. So anyway, going back to putting something in a claw like this, that's it, that's nice. Well, that's not really enough <coughs> to hold the hammer, which will really fall. Okay, but we're very close. <coughs> we have done this, and now look at this. You do a little twist around. You know, it's not even a knot. It's going to be a half hitch. And it's done. Wow. And it's very secure. And the wind will not dislodge it. And it's, again, a self-stabilizing knot. 
Okay, so now let's go to the top of the scaffold. <coughs> and then you finish getting the ladder, of course, automatically a little slack. Now look at that, with a little bit, with one or two fingers, you abandon the rope. And you see, gravity pulled the knot. I didn't have to pull the knot. You cannot call that a tie. <laughs> <laughs> come from the maritime world, but every profession, I mean, the butcher eats a lot, right? Uh, the surgeon eats a lot. So, some nuts are thousands of years old. For example, one I like very much comes from the Middle Ages. You know? And actually, this rope is different from the little cord I have used so far that were um, webbed, they were uh, with many strands crisscrossing. This is a twisted rope. It, if you untwist it, you will see the strands. This is one strand. This is a rope with three strands. So the first ropes were twisted. And would, would you hold this, please? And would you hold this too? And you know what? With this hand would be better. And if you raise your arm, everybody will be able to see. And now I thank you because you have become two posts of a laundry line. <laughs> <laughs> Don't wobble it and make it strong. So now, Today, we have many ways to hang our laundry. Uh, we have those little clips, I don't even know the name, you know, they are Close wooden, have you? Close pins. Close pins. Close pins. And they were wooden and now they are metallic or plastic with springs. Soon we'll have, you know, a little uh, blueberry or raspberry or something attached <laughs> to it. Anyway, let's go back to the Middle Ages. They had not invented yet those little useless clips. <laughs> so somebody, and I love that, somebody looked at the rope twisted and said, ah, Let's untwist it a bit and pass a corner of my laundry. It's clean, clean laundry. Huh? <laughs> um, and then let's pass the other corner here. And of course, let's continue the entire line. We we'll pull, pull, pull a little bit. OK, and this, by the way, we in our cities have forgotten the art of trying with the breeze and the sun and the delicious smell of the shirt that you know float with the wind. We put that in our noisy little thing and it's uh, anyway. So here, isn't that ingenious because it's using the property of the twisted rope. Now, again, at the end, everything is dry. Ah, it smells wonderful. You go in the meadow. So if you had, again, if you had those little things, you need a little stool, you need to get on your toes, you need to take them out, those little clips, put them somewhere. Not here. A quarter of a second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, nuts can save your life. So, um, actually, would you, would you come on stage? Because you're going to help me with your little cord. Yeah. I want to demonstrate something. There are many nuts. There is a chapter in my book. Nuts can save your life. Um, now you're not a close line anymore, <laughs> you're a cliff. Are you strong enough to be a cliff? A rock cliff. So put your hand very high up, okay? You know what, the other hand is better because people can see your face. With the arm here, some people cannot see your face. <laughs> <laughs> so you hold this, hold it very tight, okay? You are at the top of the rock and I am a climber who has lost control, you know, I lost my rope, whatever, but there is a little line there. But I know with my weight that I cannot hold on to this line and save my life. I will burn or cut my fingers and, you know, or, or imagine another situation, you're in a boat and you have to hold a little line, like a fishing line to, to hold a mass that is broken. I mean, so many situations we can invent where you would save the day or you would save a life if you were able to hold on to a very thin cord when there is a lot, a lot of tension. Push, push over there. You <coughs> see, I cannot look at that. Okay. So there is a knot. Again, I, I love to say ingenious. There is a knot which is called the marlin spike hitch because a marlin spike in marine is a conic little tool made of steel that you use to enter the strands of a rope to be able to do a splice, for example. But in my situation, I'm talking about surviving, anything we do, you know, a, a rusty nail or the handle of a toothbrush, a pen, any, not a toothpick, but anything that you hold on will be enough. 
So here is this, which is again a little dance of the rope. It's not really a knot. But in half a second, I now can, I can almost one ski too. You see? So pull, pull on that very hard. You see, I resist and I hold it. Now, wouldn't it be incredible in a dire situation? You could save your life if only you could do this knot with one hand. Well, quite a few knots, and it's in my book, <laughs> you can do with one hand. So here it is, I go like this, I go like that, you need, it, of course, a little bit of practice, and you bring the loop to the end of the object, and now you save yourself mm. with one hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>
a square knot. And I threw it in the hand of an expert in knot. And I said, can you untie this? And the man started fumbling with his fingers trying to separate the two loops. That man knew nothing about knots mm -hmm. because there is a beautiful way to untie the square knot. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it together. You hold the knot like that, and you could do it uh, with the lower part or the higher part, but let's do it with the higher part. It's more simple. In the higher, you have the little end and the part of the rope. So you hold the little hand very strongly and the body of the rope, and you jerk it into one line. I call it the track, you know, like the railroad track when I work with children. Now look at what you can do. You take the knot and you glide it along the track and it dissolves in thin air. Isn't that great? Yes. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's do it again with a little variation. So now you're professional, right? Left over right, you turn around. Right over left, you turn around, you tighten only a little bit, and you give yourself a glide. Yes, it's a square nut that glides. Now you tighten it, and, but now hold on, hold on. Now look at me before you do it. I know it's hard, but hold on. So I take a little hand, I take the body of the rope, I jerk it to create a line, but that's my invention. I thought, put it vertical, because now gravity is gonna call and help you dissolve the nut. You see, great invention. Okay. So now you, oh no, you don't, you don't really know, sir, sir, you have to glide or not down and leave a little bit of help. This gentleman is just shaking and the crowd by itself. No. Okay, hold on, hold on. I give you another variation. And again to children, magic. Well, it looks like magic. So I go a bit faster. Left over right, right over left. Before tightening, I make sure it glides. I tighten. I go back in front now of a group of kids. And I say, look at that. You know how to untie this knot? And I go like this. Now look, look at me. Huh? Look at me. If not, you're not going to see. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> okay, instead of gliding the knot gently, visibly, now put your hand over the knot, glide it, and ask the kid to blow. And the kid becomes a magician because the knot has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? Are you ready for it? I'm, I'm going to do a challenge. I've never done that before, but I want to try. I'm going. I would love to try to teach the audience a complex knot. Are you up for it? Yes. 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 Are you paying attention? <laughs> no, it's very funny. I feel we have a class here. You know. I'm going to give you uh, assignments. You know. Okay. So actually, this knot that I'm going to show you, my favorite knot, the figure of it is complex to teach because it involves a complex twist of the wrist. And I tried to show it to the audience, I never succeeded, until I thought, okay, I am in the wrong direction. I should not go directly with the hand and the rope and showing the twist. First, let's simplify and use only the hand. So here it is, we have two positions, the starting position, position one. You put the hand in front of you, the palm facing your face, and you show me two fingers, okay. Now that's position one. Position two is you turn the hand around, you know, facing away from you, and it's like this. Position one, position two. Show me. Position one, position two. You guys are great. <laughs> okay, but that's going to be too simple. <laughs> to, go, to go from position one to position two, you don't reverse the hand. You twist the wrist. So now, let's go very slowly. But you know you have to arrive here. You slowly bring the fingers towards you and you continue to turn toward the floor, continue to turn arrive to position two. You good. You good. Let's do it one more time. You start position one. You bring the fingers toward you. Don't stop. Bring toward the floor. Keep turning around. You arrive in position two. And now we're ready to put the rope into action. Hope it's gonna work. Huh? Concentrate. Everybody can see me here? Okay. Now, you go to position one, and you have um, a small uh, lens of rope toward you, and toward the wall, the rest of the rope. So, not, not a tiny bit, it will fall, you know. Give me like, you know, six, eight, ten inches, okay? Now, of course, the difficult thing, if now you are going to do the move, the rope will fall off. Mm. So, with the left hand, you hold the end, okay? Don't tighten it, just leave it like this, hold the end. And now, very delicately, because you don't want the rope to fall to the floor, 
you have to start position one and you turn toward you, you go toward the floor, you finger pass behind the rope and you arrive to position two. Stay like this, don't move, don't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now it's not two fingers anymore, now it's a pair of pliers. Right? Now, the left hand really wants to give its little bit to the pair of pliers. Stay like this! And look at that, I could pull and arrange the knot, but look, gravity is almost doing it as per magic. I created a figure of it. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, you still have your watch? <laughs> what time it is? About 12 to 8. Okay, so um, very soon I'm going to go into Q&A, but I want to do one more thing. I want to... Uh, will, will you come and help me? Um, I want to uh, talk about the sensors, because in nothing, all your sensors are, are alive. You know, you can smell the hand grow, and you can touch, and sometimes you hear a snap when you make a strong knot. All your senses. Will you, will you uh, stand here and face the audience? And I don't have to say smile because it was natural. <laughs> <laughs> I want to tell you something. Actually, there are doctors in the audience. You will know that. But it's an unknown fact. Is that our senses have the main seat. For example, to hear, we have the ears. But in our body, we have a, an area where all our senses have a special spot. For example, the earring, you use your ear. But also, there is a, in the front of the forehead, there is a spot where you have hearing cells. Now, that is true because in the 19th century, some doctors had a stethoscope with three branches, two for the ears and one with a little rubber band around the forehead. Or if you're a spy in a hotel room, you want to hear what they say, you take an empty glass, you put it against the wall, and you put your forehead there. <laughs> and you can hear. Okay. Now, forget about the ears. The other sense, touch, sense of touch. Well, we have our fingers. That's how we touch things. Aha. There is, in the body, located at the top of the wrist, some touching cells. And I'm going to prove it to you. This is a special knot that I weighted on a special sensitive scale. And I'm going to ask you, hold it the normal way, the touching way, with your fingers, and tell me how much you weigh, very roughly. How much what? How much it weighs. An ounce? A pound? No, 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 a pound. Tell me roughly what you think. Ten ounces. Ten ounces? That's good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now we're going to use a more sensitive area. Put it at the top of your wrist. It's here, okay? And here. And also, you know what? When you feel things, it, you are disturbed by your eyes. So look at the ceiling, and now tell me how much it weighs. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. This is, this is politically incorrect. You know? <laughs> Uh, it's very difficult, you know, I, I don't know. It's very difficult to untie. Okay, you are free, thank you very much. Well, we have arrived at the most important moment of this encounter for me is that I now should stop my monologue and I should welcome a dialogue. So uh, please raise your hand. I don't think we need a mic, but project your voice so people everywhere can hear. And do we have a first question? We need a first question. Oh! Yeah. I am very impressed because, no, 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 this is serious. You're laughing, but there's nothing to laugh about. In a Q&A, the person who raised his or her hand first is a courageous man or woman. Because, you know, in a crowd, I mean, some people are shy, so you have a question that's very good. What is your question? I'd like to know what the figure eight knot is used for. Great. It's a beautiful knot. Yes, the, the figure eight knot, as I explained before, as I told before, is a termination knot. You could do a simple knot, it will do the same, but actually if you tighten it, you won't be able to untie it. The figure of eight knot, which now, and you have to practice, huh? even if you, don't, if you didn't get it very well, it's in the book, mm -hmm. and you do it very slowly and you will get that little move, and then you'll be able to do like me to do it completely blindfolded, of course. Okay. 
So the figure of eight knot is one of the numerous knots that you can put at the end of the rope to stop the rope. Mm -hmm. For example, on a boat, you have some rope that goes through block and tackles. And it, the rope will fall free. It would be a disaster on the boat. But with a little termination knot, the rope never goes free. Something even more important. In the world of climbing, when you rappel down, you know, I love to climb and I love to rappel down with a rope or two ropes. And many alpinists die. Because when you rappel down, it's so joyful, you forget <laughs> what life is made of. And you forget that your rope has an end. <laughs> so you have and you fall to your death. I mean, that, please don't laugh. But anyway, so now it's almost a common thing. It's almost a rule. Before you rappel, even if it's a hundred yards rappel, you put a little termination knot at the end. And now you know that if you absorb, if you're a poet like me and you know, forget about time and, and, and practical things, you'll have a little warning, ah, oh, I am at the end of my rope. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. Thank you for that first question. So let's raise hand. And also, you know what? I am very happy today. We have young people, we have children in the room. I would love to have a question from a child from a young adult. For example, uh, Mrs. Rainbow, uh, it's not your name, but it's so beautiful, the rainbow you're wearing. Would you ask me a question, or are you not ready for that? Um, okay, what you might think of one when I ask for somebody else. Raise your hand, please. Uh, oh, oh, here we have a child with a question. Um, may I ask, what is your name? Okay, may I check your hand? We don't have to, okay. Uh, tell me your question. Can people make um, um, a knot that's like a two? Like what? <laughs> Can people make... A knot make that looks like the letter T, that looks like the letter A? Can people make a knot that looks like the letter A? Well, yes, they could. For example, um, would you hold this? And would you hold this? And I hold this, I need another hand here to hold the top of the A. Okay, so for example, if I have this alphabetic problem, <laughs> are you an author? <laughs> I would, for example, do a very old hitch called the club hitch. And then here, I could do, well, to stop it, I could do a constrictor, which is a club hitch with a locking attitude. And I would have created a letter A. But so far, in a nothing world, I don't know yet what would be the use of having a letter A. <laughs> <laughs> but I will think about it. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know what? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't ask me about B, C, and C. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, please. Um, what's not Pardon? Um, what knot do you use the most? What is the knot that I use the most? Um, I use uh, the rolling hitch, which is a very clever knot to pull my balancing pole to the top of a building because I need a balancing pole to, to walk. Um, and the balancing pole is basically a bar, a metal bar. And sometimes it's, it's painted, it's shiny, so it's slippery. So what knot do you do when you have a slippery bar, you know, a pipe, a balancing pole for a wall worker that you need to pull vertically? I'm not saying you make a knot here and you pull it like an I-beam. I'm talking about this. I mean, look at that. It's very sliding. So would you hold this like this? OK. <laughs> the knot you do is a rolling hitch. So actually, put it horizontally and a little bit high so people can see. And you go like this two, three times. Of course, some knots. The more turns, the more friction. And then you go in the end like this a few times. And now it's incredible because now the more I pull, the more it grips, like a giant gripping, right? And I have tried that on greasy pipe. And the rope holds. So now I show you what I use it for. I bring my balancing pole to the top of the building. But sometimes in nothing, you have incredible inventions that are so simple and so subtle. For example, if you wanted something stronger than a rolling hitch, you could do the kilik, which is a little turn. But you see, it takes the strength from here and it brings it, brings it here. You could do two, two little kiliks. You could do 12, right? And this is like impossible to dislodge. So I love those little subtilities and that's the answer to the question. You know what, maybe two or three more questions and then we will have a little break to install the table and I will sign book. So 
here. Uh, to, uh, oh, great. Um, you're out. <laughs> Yes. May, may I ask what is your name? Kate. Kate. Okay, Kate. About how many knots do you know? Okay, how about many knots? To, oh, you didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm joking. You were there from the beginning, right? You didn't arrive late, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know, remember when I said raise your hand if you know only one or two knots or five or ten? And at some point I was joking, say raise your hand, those of you who know 200 knots. And I raised my hand. Do you, do you not see that? <laughs> You're sorry. No, I'm joking. I hope, I hope I'm not bothering you when I say you didn't pay attention. I, do, I know you paid attention, but I wanted to joke with you. So I know 200 knots. I mean, one day actually, um, preparing for the book, I said, oh, I, I better if I'm being asked one day um, by a child with a rainbow t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> How many knots I know? I better know. So I look into my notes, I work, and I made a list. And I counted, it wasn't exactly 200, maybe it was 199.5, <laughs> but 200 is a nice round number. And you don't need 200 knots. I hope you're going to get the book, and in it, if you learn three or four knots, five maybe, you'll be set for life. You know? mm -hmm. One in each family, you know, one to save your life. Oh, there is a knot where, you know, I look at in cities, for example, I look at people walking. And it's obscene, as my friend Werner Hölzer would say, to see so many people stopping to walk to retie their shoelaces. <laughs> what a loss of time! <laughs> so in my book, there is the super stubborn shoelace, <laughs> which is a variation. Everybody knows the shoelace. It's one more turn at the beginning to create more friction. And when you have the two loops, it's one more turn with the two loops. It's quite complicated to look at it, but once you are acquired it, it's very simple, with a little bit of practice, and never again in your life you, um, you, you have your shoelaces untied. Thank you for the question. Maybe uh, one or two, maybe the last question. If I don't like it, I ask for another last question. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the hangman's noose and how elaborate then that kind of knotting system. Why did they devise something, like I say, so complicated when probably one, not, one of your knots would have done a good job? Well, the, the hangman's noose is the family of noose. Right. And you need noose um, to catch animals, for example. Again, in many, many years ago, when you were trapping, when, uh, when that was the most uh, the mean of, of uh, holding an animal, uh, trapping a bird, whatever. So what you would do, and I'm trying to have enough folk to demonstrate, you would do a U with a rope, and you would go around and around and around, and in the case of the hangman's nose with a terrible reputation, but they use it in the movies a lot, yeah. uh, you, there is a tradition. It should be between 8 and 14 turns. Mm -hmm. So again, when a not expert shows me a nose, I come quickly and I say, you know nothing about <laughs> <laughs> So what you do is you do as many turns as you can or as you want, and you terminate, here I did four because I didn't want to take too much of the time, by pulling one side of the loop. And like every knot, it's a good example to talk about that. Every knot, it's said in my book, once you have created the knot, the knot is not there yet. You, uh, you have to tighten it. But before to tighten it, we have to do something very important, which the maritime people know. You have to work the knot, which means you have to you know, put it into shape. You want it to look good. You want it to be strong. And then you tighten it. And never tighten a knot by pulling one side or the other. If it has four bits of rope, you have to pull each of them. Uh, actually, not in the case of a loop, because of a noose, because if you pull that, you will. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so anyway, um, this is the, the noose family, very important um, in some ways. And also, like many knots, it has magic in it. Because look at that, by pulling it, it appears. <laughs> OK, one last question. Uh, yes. Oh no, hold on, somebody very far. You are, you are the last question. No, no, no. I, but I want to ask you, what is the luckiest uh, knot for you? <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, okay, that's going to be my, my last question, if you don't mind, because then we have to sign and you, know, you have to go home and practice, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, your question was, what is my lucky uh, knot? Luckiest knot. Okay, I didn't have in the book a family of not lucky knots, but there are many. Actually, it's, it's a little bit bothering. So many people say, oh, how do you call this knot? Oh, that's a luck knot. That's a good charm knot. That's a lucky knot. And actually, it's not true. There is a few knots that are called luck knots. 
by history. Um, but I do not believe in the luck of knots because I'm a wild worker and I cannot trust knots. I mean, I love knots, uh, but I have to do as if um, I have to check everything. So before a high wire walk, I have uh, my assistant to do knots. Of course, I go and check them before I walk on the wire. But a lot of knots I do myself. And you know what? Before to walk on the wire, I go back and I check my own knots. And my friend thinks that really I am crazy because sometimes before he show a very important knot that I made and that I check, I go and I check it again. Two times. And yes, it did happen sometimes three times. I go and I check knots. So in a way, I don't want to be lucky. I don't want today when I do the first step on the wire, I don't want to hope to get on the other side. <laughs> I, I value life, my life, and, you know, I value life so much. I want to make sure when I grab the pole and make the first step that I will do a successful last step and then I, I invite my friends to a good dinner, right? <laughs> so you have to, in a way, you have to be in a state of mind of not trusting any knot. But some knots are very trustable. So anyway, I don't have a, a good charm knot. But uh, I will answer uh, maybe visually that last question is now that you know how to do the square knot, right? Follow me if you can. You go left over right and you do one more turn. And then you go right over left and you do one more turn. And by this simple little variation, you have created a beauty, or you have to work the knot before you tighten it to make it look splendid, symmetric, and you know what, this is the double surgeon knot. If you cut yourself, you go to the hospital, if the surgeon is worth his weight of hemp, uh, <laughs> manilia, nylon, he will do the double surgeon knot. And I answer your question with that because some people call it the lucky knot because it's so beautiful. Some newlywed put it here as a symbol of their union, two go beautifully entangled. Some people, the hippies, put it here. It looks good. So anyway, um, thank you very much. And, and uh, I think you're going to explain the best of the will be signing uh, in a few minutes up here on the stage. If you haven't bought a book yet, it's available at all the registers. And we'll be ready for you in just a few minutes. Help her change out the table. <laughs> Yeah, we're, uh, 